now here we're looking at a 3D scanned asset um, that came out to be a little over a million triangles. It's got a texture and you know normally from the 3D scan data you have a lot of you know stuff at the bottom and more importantly you have uh, a lot of back faces here so if I turn off back faces uh, you know our mesh is not watertight and this is going to normally cause problems when we do remeshing in any other program and we'd have to go and fill all these holes up so we don't get uh, mesh built inside of our model but with Insulod we can easily fix that so this watertight method of fixing this 3D scans and and getting that all figured out with the remesh so let's go ahead and go to Insulod and we have uh, fuzzy face count set to normal let's try lowest and let's see if we can take this to say a mobile mobile uh, poly count at the end and we have UV so we'll just set this to auto since it's fairly organic and we'll leave everything else but like I said we do want to we this asset is not watertight and we want to tell Insulod that and so we're going to tell it to ignore back faces and with this box checked none of the stuff inside the model is going to get built out so let's just go ahead and hit remess selected assets And with this, um, you know, one of the things with this model is there's a lot of overlap. It's multiple figures. We have the main figure at the top. We have uh, the small figure at the bottom. We have a sword. We have all kinds of cloth and all kinds of different pieces from this 3D scan. Um, you know, lots of overlap, lots of small areas underneath in here and, and up in here that would normally cause a lot of problems with baking. And if you're going to do this, uh, you know the normal workflow getting the 3d scan cleaning it up doing a manual retopology by hand um, doing uvs by hand all of this takes a lot of time but you can see just by setting a few things we didn't really change much in here by the default settings and we're already remeshing this thing and what we're going to get is a low polygon version of this 3d scanned uh, statue set up for mobile and we're going to get uh, finished uvs and we're also going to get finished baked maps for both um, a 2K normal map and a 2K color map from this original. And one of the things to note with this right here is that the, the UV shells for this for this new mesh right here are really nice and cleaned up, and 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 we only have you know 10 UV shells here. But if we look at the UV shells for the 3D scan, it's going to take Maya a minute here. Uh, we have f uh, over, you know, almost 1,500 triangles, so 1,437 UV shells. So we have lots of UV shells, and some of these UV shells are so small, they're only taking up like a pixel or a couple pixels. And this texture that's on here is an 8K texture, so it's a really, really big texture applied here and just to get because of all these extra uv shells from the 3d scan it's there's a lot of wasted space in the texture so you get a bloated texture map um, and by you know reducing the uv shells you're getting a better, better better resolution so there's a lot of cleanup here just a really a lot of cleanup to do with these 3d scans but you can see very quickly um, we went down from the million to 2,500. And so this is, would be something for a mobile game or something you know, off in the distance, very small. And what you can see is that all of our, our overlaps are done really nicely. You know, These aren't baking onto the wrong pieces. We don't have the arm baking onto the wall or any of these other sections here. So everything baked out really nicely. And again, if we look at the UVs, nice and cleaned up. We have you know very few shells here. For this piece here, we have like a few shells here, and we've got good padding between everything, and we've got good uh, edge edge padding from the pixels at the edge being uh, smeared out from the side, so everything's going to have really good use use there. So one of the other things you'll notice from the 3D scan is that we do have some stuff at the bottom. Uh, you know, when you usually do a 3D scan, you you end up getting a little bit of the environment around it as well. And so we can get rid of that inside of Insulod. So what I'm going to do is going to select the mesh, 
And we can actually turn off ignore back facing because what we're going to do is we're going to create a cl clipping plane. And what this clipping plane is going to do is it's going to pick a spot and it's going to clip out everything below this spot. So we could, I guess I could go up a little higher to get rid of this right here. And like I said before with the ignore back faces, that's what's making our mesh watertight and we're not getting anything built up inside of there. Actually, I should undo and just show that one more time just to make sure I show that, is that there's nothing that was built up inside of here. There's no mesh inside of here that was accidentally created or unwanted geometry. So really nice there. So let's go ahead and create the clipping plane. Move this up. And we could create multiple clipping planes as well. So we could rotate this and we could have only the section of our of our model that we want to be shown here. So we could clip out everything behind if we wanted. So if we wanted this thing to be jammed inside of a wall. We could just clip out everything else and it will give us a brand new mesh there. So for the fuzzy face count, let's turn this up and get a higher resolution mesh here and take a look at that. So again, we don't need to ignore back faces on because the clipping plane is going to create this thing and make it watertight. And we have we still have your UV set to auto. So now I'm just going to go ahead and hit remesh selected objects. All right, so now this mesh has been completed. We can move it off to the side. And I'll go ahead and delete the clipping plane. Well, you'll see as I didn't pull it up quite high enough, so we could delete those faces out. But again, because we have the clipping plane there, it did create this and leave it as watertight. So nothing was built up inside of this model anywhere. So all the back faces were ignored. And this one is a lot higher resolution. So now we're up to like 16,000. So we are at uh, much lower for that lowest resolution uh, for our fuzzy count. But everything looks really nice. And if we turn off our textures, we still have a pretty good uh, low poly mesh. Everything, you know, nothing's baking on top of each other. We have, you know, good intersections here. We're not getting uh, where the, the leg is close to the, the rock here. We're not getting, you know, parts of this stuck on or anything like that. Everything is being really well split apart uh, where it needs to be and as it should be. So great looking mesh there. And with this texture, and again, to you know, reiterate that this texture we came from an 8K texture with thousand, with over a thousand UV shells, and with all these UV shells, we have such small, you know, parts on here. They're they're smaller than a pixel probably, or you know, really low res. And rebaking this by hand and, and doing this manually, we could end up with you know, pretty bad. Uh, transfer map from transferring to it from an 8k to a 2k or anything like that and so those really small uv shells were, would would create an issue in that manual process and start to look like freckles and and, and breaking things up in a, in a poor manner there so again we have everything looking really nice here uh, all the way down in here and we went from over a million to just 16 16,000 so 1.1 to 16,000 Everything's really nice and clean here. And with this, we can just go ahead and if we wanted to optimize this further, maybe maybe 16,000 is too much and we'd rather be at somewhere 15% or 50% of this. So we'll just go ahead and come over to the optimize tab, go to percent triangles, we'll type in 50 and everything should be as default here. So I'm not even gonna change anything. We do have textures on this, so we are gonna have that as, as an important thing for InstaLot to keep in mind while it optimizes our meshes. So just go ahead and hit optimize selected meshes. And already we're done. And now we have a new mesh here that is 8,000 triangles. And again, we could take this again and optimize this down further to 10%. So now we're at 800 triangles and we can have a full, full optimized set uh, from this 1 million polygon uh, 3D scan that, that had an 8K texture on it to our full set of LODs and a new mesh with new UVs and new textures and everything uh, ready to put into our real-time application. So I hope you can see the power of Insulod and you know creating these things and uh, taking the scans or the high-poly models that you're used and 
really just skip the tedious long process of making game ready assets and get right back into the fun part. So have that high poly model, that's the fun part. And then texturing is that next fun part for the, for the artist. So, and this just gets rid of everything with a one button touch with a lot of options for you to control inside the remesher and with the optimize. So I hope you enjoyed this look at optimizing uh, 3D scan data.